Uh, hi, everybody. I would like to welcome to my presentation. And uh, during the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, I will try to explain how we at Suba are trying to re reduce the operational uh, business costs uh, to our customers and, of course, also to us. So uh, the content of my presentation will be shortly to uh, let you understand what we are doing as company, Suva, in Switzerland. Uh, I show you roughly the business problem we have to solve, then with what kind of solution architecture we try to implement and, and to, um, to evolve, that we are getting these uh, 35 million APIs per day. And, uh, of course, it will be uh, the API management platform from WSO2, uh, which will take the main part of all this uh, architecture. And, of course, surely you are very interested in knowing what's the lesson learned during the last almost one year we needed uh, for getting uh, up and running with a productive system. So Suva uh, is based in, in Switzerland. Uh, we are insuring around 129, uh, 28,000 uh, companies. They are our customers. And behind, they have around 2 million of employees. And if something happened, we uh, help to uh, the insured people. So the, the employees are, in a way, then the people we know in, in that case. So. The industry sectors uh, which our customers are in are all over Switzerland. Uh, they are all kind of industry sectors. The biggest one are electrical uh, engineering. Uh, they are company uh, of construction industry, uh, warehouses, and so on. So throughout uh, all the sectors. So Sura is not only about insuring people. We are uh, investing a lot of money in prevention of accidents. So each life we can prevent having an, an accident is also not uh, helping in spend us uh, money. And also, of course, not having um, uh, that person injured. And, and, uh, and we are not having to uh, invest in rehabilitation and like this. So our model is uh, about insurance, about prevention, and rehabilitation, we have two hospitals. Uh, in Switzerland, uh, <coughs> we are around 4,200 people, employees. Uh, they are all over Switzerland. We have uh, 18 agencies, and uh, the central headquarter is uh, in L at Lucerne, uh, where also our IT department is uh, based. So now let's talk about uh, the business problem. So, there, from the top management, uh, they started um, an advance strategy. That's meaning to go forward. Um, we are in a very good position at the moment. We have a lot of money. We are healthy. Everything f looks great. But uh, we know that the, the interest rates, it's all over the, the world, they are low. So all our financial aspects for gaining uh, or getting money, uh, we are not able to, to have such a good profit anymore like it was uh, some years ago. Also, there is a shift in accident patterns, more from, from uh, two later uh, accidents. So people have, uh, seems, more time. They are not having to work so hard, so they have more uh, activities. Uh, and they do some accidents. Um, and this is, uh, we also have this insurance um, products uh, to, to for them. So it's all about also digitalization, of course. That's the, the buzzword everywhere, and it's even more than a buzzword. It's now really getting reality. And uh, we also have a, a market share which is shrinking. It's, um, we are not able to expand. We are not able to, uh, uh, to get into new markets. We are not able to go to Europe and, and to start to sell our products. We are just in a regulated market within Switzerland. Uh, so it stays the same. So what we can do? 
uh, for being still healthy in 10 years. We only have to uh, uh, trying to reduce our operation costs. So that's one of the main targets we, we have. So we are focusing with that our strategy on our core market and trying like this to reduce the, the operational costs. So um, after this business strategy, our IT department uh, came with a digitalization strategy and, and we were having a look what kind of requirements we, they are on the market which we have to, to take care. And one is that customers have more flexible working hours. So they need systems which, in a way, are around uh, 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Um, the, there are emerging transaction uh, portals, like marketplaces for uh, web applications and uh, APIs, which uh, we have to start to connect. So we are not all doing our own. There are other parties which do um, applications, solutions, and and we need to integrate with them. They also increased uh, standard platforms and standards for inter-exchange in e-health uh, between uh, consumer and provider. And also there we, we are in the, in the part of, of providing services. And of course, also our interest is, is reducing, um, uh, well, the, the, the interest of, of our customers are reduce operation costs. It's not only our uh, aim. So the goal is uh, higher uh, process efficiency. It's uh, staying up and running seven days uh, a week, 24 hours, uh, um, to try to design the services we are providing to our customers through APIs in a way that it's reusable. So it's in a higher abstraction level so uh, that the same service is able to be used by several customers. And our interest is not having um, too many different kind of platforms, more a nice, beautiful, efficient uh, architecture, which is able to be, uh, uh, we, where we have the control over. So that's the, the big overall picture. Um, you see on the top the different channels, uh, which in a way we are providing our services. They are the tra traditional web applications. Uh, they are um, customer portals, uh, which are starting to use our services. They are partner platforms from our big uh, partners, customers, where they have server-based systems, which just need our services. They, they can't use uh, web applications and do screen scrapping. That's uh, quite old uh, technology. And of course, we have also traditional call centers and all like this. So uh, from the left, you have the, the suva.ch. That's in a way that all the static content we are providing uh, just for browsing. Then in the middle, we have just these two categories, uh, the web applications and uh, APIs, API management. Uh, for automated transaction, and that's in a way the, that main channel which we want to try uh, to, to um, provide to our customers uh, much more than in the past. Uh, there are also traditional input-output uh, management system, just documentation which has still to go on paper or emails uh, or in an electronic way uh, to our customers or our customers sending it to us, and of course the contact management. So now uh, let's focus on, on these uh, two uh, center parts of web application and API management. So now on this slide, you, I, I'm going now always to zoom more and more insight, okay, for giving you more and more uh, details about uh, the whole platform. So the web application there is the dynamic content, interaction with the, the, the clients, um, with the companies. Uh, that's on, on the, the left side. On the right side, it's the part which is implemented by the customer, uh, by, the, um, by the enterprise, by the partner platform. So they implement our API oh, for, for consuming it. And the implementation, in a way, of the business case for both scenarios is, in a way, uh, we try to do the same implementation. 
So to bring it together uh, on the e-service platform, that's on the extranet. And there is actually the business logic and the data which, which we provide. And between, uh, for, for interconnecting, um, in a way, these two worlds, there will be the API um, gateway. So as, as we are playing there, the API provider. So in the internet, it's the same. There is the same architecture. We have also this e-service platform. It's a REST-based Java, REST-based um, platform on a WebLogic uh, application server. So it's still quite big. It's not like uh, microservices. Um, and the integration to our core systems goes over the um, service bus. That's just the enterprise service bus from WSO2, which we already have since 2011. So all our core system platforms is ASAP, Java, uh, homegrown platforms, uh, standard uh, solutions which we buy. They are all interconnected by web services and uh, through the ESB, so quite traditional nowadays. So the decoupling which we are doing, there are in a way two ways. So either you, you go with the APIs to the core uh, systems, and you, you have the, the problem that our core systems, and there are really a lot of core systems, they have always to be up and running, more or less. So um, at the moment, we are not really able to do this. They are running in best effort. Um, so we were thinking about uh, uh, decoupling everything and bringing the solutions for the APIs and the web applications to the front. And uh, like this, to have a different life cycle of, of uh, APIs. And the business, uh, the business requirements are a little bit uh, different in, in this scenario than our own uh, business requirements for internal applications. So we are decoupling it in, in this way. So we bring it uh, through ETL, uh, the, the data, to the outside, to the extranet platforms. And uh, that's mostly for reading. That's enough. So if we have APIs which are just reading data, that's, that's fine. So we are totally decoupled. We can scale as uh, there is the demand. The, the problem in, in this scenario is that when it comes to change data, so the data which is changed in the extranet has one day to come back to the internet. So they were introduced as synchronous messaging um, architectures. And we bring it like this uh, to the back end and then to incorporate it with the, the data. And then goes again out um, the updated data. So that's a, uh, a workflow which we already have in our core systems between SAP and, and another uh, system which we bought. And uh, on the partner systems, partner data, they are inter-exchanging it like this. And uh, it works. So we are continuing on this concept. Um, maybe I, one advice I want to tell you that this all what I show you here just works more or less for our company. Doesn't mean that it will work for you. So you always have to analyze what's your situation and then maybe, of course, to adopt. But lessons learned and like this, this you can uh, take at home and uh, study it. So uh, now let's talk about the API management platform. So we did some evaluation. We, our architecture is, was first based just with ESB and internally interconnecting all the platforms. Now the next step was just to say, OK, uh, let's provide these APIs to the outside world. So let's interconnect to other uh, companies. And uh, what we can do, APIs are around since a long time. Uh, there are a lot of solutions which are just doing with uh, web applications and they do everything ho um, on their own. But we wanted to use a, a product which is helping us to manage APIs uh, in, in a better way. And uh, of course, because we have already know-how and experience with uh, WSO2 products and with the ESB, which is quite small and, and nice to, to handle, and it worked, worked great for us. Um, then we, um, we were uh, just starting to look to API management, uh, to the API manager product. 
and uh, we figured out how we can introduce uh, this product in our uh, company and with our know-how which we already have. So we started in 2016. So the, the scenario which we were thinking about uh, was just this first, one first API. So in a way we were thinking big, but we wanted to start small, just for gaining experience, to see how it works, if we are able to manage it, uh, to adapt it um, in a way the business is starting to, to continue and to evolve. So that use case is uh, about the claim status info service. That means that if a person is injured uh, and needs some medica medicamentation and he goes to a drugstore, uh, so he presents um, his uh, accident number he got before, and uh, the, the drugstore uh, is looking to this number and checks if Suva knows this number. And if it knows, then the, the drugstore owner knows that we are going to pay him the medication which he is giving to the patient. So uh, that's quite easy. And until now, there was, on the left side top, you see that application, uh, claim status info applica uh, web application. So there he was able to go to the website to enter the number and uh, to check if, if it no uh, we know the number or if we are not knowing the number. Uh, now there was always more and more a demand of a uh, provider of software systems about the API so that they can do their own application and incorporate the, our API to their system. So they are free to use the API wherever uh, they want. And uh, so that was the, the plan, just to design an API and to provide it uh, to, to companies which want to use this in their software. So the overall structure um, you, you see here, and uh, you see on the top uh, the web uh, a firewall, that's the red bar. Um, then a uh, web application firewall, the API gateway. Then is coming uh, the common logic, uh, business logic, and uh, the persistency layer, uh, where the data gets uh, read. And all this is presented in a way to the two kind of, of applications, to the web application and to the API. The core system is only providing the data which is loaded by uh, ETL, um, trans um, by ETL uh, load. So uh, looking a little bit more uh, deep to the, um, to the whole uh, API management platform as we were building it, um, there are several ways how you do it. We were doing it just in the toughest way you can imagine. So we, we were just starting the, the big, blown, complex environment. So that means uh, we have the web firewall, um, application firewall in front for protecting us. That's about threat protection. Uh, we have the load balancer. And the load balancer goes for the runtime to two instances of API gateway. Uh, then it comes, goes through a um, firewall, comes again to a load balancer, and goes to two instances of key manager and two instances of uh, traffic manager for throttling aspects. Um, the API store is uh, here as API developer portal. That's in a way the developer which is able to search for APIs, to look to documentation, and, and uh, also to test and to play with the API. Uh, there is one instance of this. Uh, for us, it's not so important to have this fault tolerant. It's more important to have the gateway. The publisher is, is internally that we are able to publish uh, the APIs on each uh, different stage. So we also build some API categories for managing APIs when we are starting to, to have more and more APIs and also present them in the, in the store. So one is the public API. This, this first API which we did is a public API. Uh, there are no security requirements. You just have to, to log in, to, uh, well, to have an account, to log in, to get your, your access key, uh, access token, and, and that's it, and you just can use it. We have to handle that in no way you are able to, to, to crash our systems by that API. So we have to do it very robust. We also don't know how you are going to use that API. 
you can use it on a server system, you can do your own web application, you, you put it on a portal, we don't know. So we have to take uh, in account all these kind of aspects. So the next one is the partner API. The partner API uh, should give um, some more value. It will be also more complex. Um, it's not only about reading data, but also about data modification, bring data back, really the inter-exchange of data. So there you need surely security requirements. Uh, you have to identify you. There will be uh, roles um, which uh, will exist that you are uh, able to, to use the, um, the system uh, permissions. And, uh, but it's also public available. So you will also see this partner API in the store. Only when you want to use it, you have to go to uh, additional registration process because then you will really get the contract with us and it's a little bit more uh, complicated. Um, the, the last one is private API. Private API is uh, an API which you are not seeing in the store, um, which is just uh, meant to be used by one partner, not by more partners. It's just a really special uh, API which can be, be, be built for, for a special purpose. Uh, at the beginning, we were thinking we only are going to, to use um, APIs uh, for providing to, to our customers. Now we are uh, changing a little bit this and are also saying that our web applications, which are in a way REST, uh, using REST services and single page applications, they are also having APIs and they are now using also the same infrastructure. So they are all private APIs because they are our APIs. They can be slightly different in design than APIs which we are providing to uh, public or to our partners. So um, the Suva API developer portal uh, has uh, like three stages. So I'm not showing you now a demonstration because I, I can't, I have no laptop. So, but if you like, uh, you can go uh, to suva.ch. Uh, you just uh, search for API. You will hit uh, the site core site. That's the static. There you have some overall uh, information. I advise you it's, it's German uh, information only, uh, no English. Uh, we are still not so far. Um, and from there, you can uh, hit some links, and you are going to the e-service platform. The e-service platform is having the documentation for the developers. So really reference guides, uh, which HTTP codes we are using on our APIs, how is the design, uh, tutorial, just the developer guides. All there is, is um, explained. And uh, we are also having a first video, which is helping uh, the first steps, how to register, and how to get access token, and like this. And from there, you, you can uh, continue with a link to the real uh, API manager uh, developer st uh, store. So um, for consuming then the API, for registering, taking the access token, and so on. And then uh, to, to start to use the API in your application. So uh, what's uh, our design aspect of, um, of the API? We uh, are using uh, Swagger, at the moment 2.0, uh, YAML based. We design our APIs, uh, there's a, a guide, um, how you have to do it, that more or less each API looks the same, that the behavior is the same in aspect of HTTP codes and like this. And uh, then we implement, we bring it to the API manager platform, to the gateway, and we do the implementation on, on our uh, Java-based uh, platform. And uh, the consumer, of course, can use all the Swagger tools where, which are around and just do his implementation. There we are not um, giving limitations or, or big advice. I think each customer nowadays knows exactly how he has to, to do this implementation. Deployment looks a little bit quite um, complicated, but uh, it's uh, quite centralized. So that means that our developers are not really uh, using API Manager, uh, only my team, uh, two people, um, well, which are in the API management uh, 
on the API management platform are using the product. So the design the developers can do, we are do doing the review of the API when everything is fine. We bring it on our uh, development environment uh, to the system. We have a look uh, if we can deploy everything correctly. Um, then we use the import-export feature uh, of API Manager Platform. And then uh, we bring everything to Git, and with Jenkins we can build nightly, uh, in a way, the artifacts which are able to be deployed on other stages. So we have a development stage, which nightly will be deployed. We can test with SOAP UI uh, scripts, and uh, if everything goes fine, it's still a snapshot version. So the next stage is uh, system integration. On this stage, uh, we deploy it as a release. So the API will be a, a released version, but it's still prototype. That means on this stage, you still don't have to use access keys. Uh, then afterwards, there comes the integration uh, stage. The integration stage will be also used by partners when they are starting to use more complicated uh, applications for testing. So that means we are going to look also how they integrate, if everything works, and if everything works, we say, okay, you are going, you can go to production. So that's the, the pre-production test uh, case for, for us and our customers. In the public uh, case of APIs, they are not going to uh, pre-production. They are just using the API on production. And um, so on pre-production and production, you are having to use the access uh, tokens. So it's not anymore uh, prototyped, but it's, it's really published, the published version of API. So lessons learned. Uh, think big, start small. I already was saying this. Uh, at the moment, we have now two APIs. One is, is uh, the public one, uh, which you can find in the store. And the other one is, is um, a private one, which we are just using for uh, specifically one uh, use case with one partner. So start first, if you never uh, used API Manager, start easy. Just start the all-in-one deployment uh, setup. Uh, start to uh, do your um, uh, build up your know, know how and, and just uh, find out how the product works because you have to adapt a little bit to the product. The product doesn't adapt to you. So uh, think about how you are going to deploy, how you are going to use everything, and uh, play, play with it, and do your experience, build up your experience. After you, you did uh, this, and you have your uh, know-how up and ready for the real, then you will have a more clear mindset uh, of how you want really to deploy if you like to go as we did in a, in a total uh, shared deployment uh, pattern, uh, which is quite complex, uh, or you need some smaller, uh, uh, more easier uh, setup, or even cloud setup uh, from, from uh, solutions from WSO2. So just start small and then grow as you, have, uh, you, you are more clear about your needs. And what we did is uh, our store uh, is, is adapted to our uh, design of, of a website. So we have to figure out um, what are we are going to do. And that's about either you customize the, the API store, which is coming from WSO2, to your needs, to your layout and all this. That's quite, quite hard work. Uh, you have to, know, to, to get to know all the know-how and jaggery and all this. Or you just say from the beginning, no, we are just using APIs, which WSO2 provides, and we do our own store in front. The store hasn't to be very complex. I think our store just has maybe 10, 12 screens, a uh, few information, and um, that's it. With this, you can run the, the whole store. So you are not having to build again all the API store WSO2 is provided. So uh, I have 20 seconds for, for questions. Uh, maybe they are not uh, enough. Don't worry, I will be outside and you just come to me and uh, we can discuss in more detail about technical uh, aspects of, of our platform. 
So uh, thank you for, for your attention and I uh, wish you still a nice day.